So parents, listen up. Where you live could determine which diseases or conditions your baby will be tested for. Well, all newborns here in the U.S., they are required to undergo screening. So a prick on the heel to look for conditions that could be hard to spot. But specific testing varies. Atlanta News First investigative Rachel Polanski dug into the data to see where Georgia ranks. Look at that Ryan though. He is kind of like a triceratops, isn't he? In this six-year-old's world, <laughs> dinosaurs roam freely. Oh, you're going to name it Harry? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's something he will never do. It's very heartbreaking because something that is treatable it is not being called because parents don't know about it. Cloud Kerbo was born in Bainbridge, Georgia, a perfectly healthy baby, or so his parents thought. His newborn screening did not detect anything abnormal. There weren't any really signs until right before his third birthday. It just became very bad to where, to the point he couldn't hardly walk. That's when Cloud's parents, Sloan and Carlisle, took him to a hospital where they say he was tested for multiple diseases before they finally got some answers. After two weeks, they called us in a little conference room and they said that Cloud has Crab A disease. Uh. Crab A is a rare disease that gradually attacks the nerve fibers in Cloud's brain, causing him to lose mental and physical function. While there's no cure, there is treatment, but early detection is key. And most infants with Crab A die before the age of two. Hey, if we'd just gone across the border to Tennessee, it would have been discovered when he was born. And we could have done a transplant then, and he might still be walking or might be able to still see well. Carlisle's right. Tennessee tests for crab bait during the newborn screening. They're one of 10 states that do so. A child's life should not be determined by the zip code they're born in. But yet, testing varies greatly state by state. Georgia tests for 37 conditions, which may seem like a lot, but let's look at our neighbors. Florida tests for 57 conditions, Tennessee tests for 67, and Alabama only tests for 31. So why the inconsistency? The March of Dimes Georgia chapter says factors include the frequency of the disease as well as funding. Do you think the financial cost of these screenings plays a role? Definitely, we have to think about financial, financial costs play a role in everything, right? We do know that for each screening there are costs associated with it. That's why March of Dimes encourages families to go to the Capitol and advocate for more conditions to be added to the newborn screening requirements. It's something the Kerbos are familiar with. In 2020, they went before the newborn screening panel and requested Crab A be added. It was denied. A year later, they tried again. This time it was added as part of a pilot program, which means if you have a newborn today, he or she will be tested for Crab A. But it's a three-year program. After that, the panel will decide if Crab A will be permanently added to Georgia's newborn screening. We don't want this to happen to anyone else. It has been one of our biggest goals is just to make sure that we do everything in our power to make everyone aware of how important newborn screening is, not just for Crab A, but for all other kinds of diseases as well. As for six-year-old Cloud, who is not expected to live past his second birthday, there's Thor. he continues to defy the odds every day. Meanwhile, the federal government also has a list of conditions that it recommends for newborn screenings. But as we told you, states decide for themselves. To take a closer look at those 37 conditions that Georgia screens for, or to compare Georgia to some other states, you can head on over to our website. Of course, that's atlantanewsfirst.com. Alan, Tracy. Rachel, thank you.